Something evil is lurking at the far end of my hallway. It wants to kill me. It craves my suffering, and it wants to make my life more complicated. Asbestos, a word that strikes fear into the hearts of many trying to renovate a house in Japan and around the world. Let's take a look at what we're going to cover in this episode. What is asbestos? What materials have asbestos in Japan? How can I verify asbestos in materials? What safety equipment is effective? And why should I care? What exactly is asbestos? Asbestos is a natural substance woven into various building materials, some of which are still used today in both residential and commercial construction. But why is it so dangerous? Let's keep the explanation short. It's a cause for certain types of lung cancer. This video aims to impart the knowledge that I've acquired about asbestos usage. Let's delve into some general knowledge about asbestos in Japan. First and foremost, when did Japan begin using asbestos containing products? Japan adopted asbestos in building materials in and around the year 1972. While this suggests that structures constructed before this year may be asbestos free, it's essential to remember that many buildings undergo renovations, additions, and repairs after their initial construction. It's not uncommon to encounter houses from the early 1900s with modern additions. Knowing when these additions have been added is key. Next, which materials are generally at risk of asbestos in Japan? You'd be surprised, the list is extensive. And there's even a database listing the companies, products, and part numbers that utilized asbestos in Japan. I'm going to put that link in the description below. If you don't know the name of the product, which is pretty hard to find out sometimes, then you can try doing a search based on the company and the type of product. All searches have to be made in Japanese, of course. As a foreigner, this can be a challenge. And even if you are proficient in Japanese, it's still a little complicated to understand, but give it a try. Here's some good news. Most materials used in single family detached houses in Japan typically did not contain asbestos. But if you have a condo or apartment, there's a significant likelihood that asbestos containing materials were used. Here are some images of materials to watch out for that are most commonly known to have asbestos in them. Some common materials that contain asbestos are, but not limited to, wall tiles, wall materials, flooring, glue, and ceiling tiles. So, how can you be certain? How can you know for sure that these materials contain asbestos? When I first started renovating my house, one of my first steps was to do research on this topic. I read tirelessly, uncovering an intricate labyrinth of information. Even floor mats have it. This was all over the news recently and a big scandal in Japan. The reality is that asbestos related knowledge is often obscure and intricate, offering no easy answers. However, I felt sufficiently informed to proceed with the renovation until I reached the kitchen tiles. The kitchen tiles appeared different and a sense of unease and dread washed over me. Asbestos alert, I thought. So, I delved into further research, concluding with 99% certainty that the tiles were safe to handle and pulverized to dust. I continued with my kitchen renovation. Then, I approached the bathroom renovation and was immediately struck by a sense of unease again. The materials in the bathroom were too different. Strange. What do you do when you're unsure? You take the hammer and you smash the walls anyway. <laughs> Nah, I'm just joking. I have a father-in-law that works to some capacity with housing and renovation. I turned to him for advice. I sent him detailed pictures of the walls and tiles. He actually took a course that gave him insight on how to spot products with asbestos. His opinion had weight. What was his response? More than likely, it has asbestos. <laughs> me, no way. Fear coursed through me, and I realized I had made a grave mistake. Was I wrong about the kitchen too? Sometimes overconfidence blinds us to our ignorance. 
Many of the materials used in the kitchen, including the tiles, match the materials used in the bathroom. At this point, my father-in-law forwarded the pictures to a more qualified expert friend of his. His friend's response? Absolutely, with almost a certainty, these materials have asbestos. F me. I couldn't believe how much I messed up. Sometimes you do things with such certainty that you forget that you really know nothing about a topic. What's the next step after such a blunder? Well, to be honest, I wasn't able to accept this answer and I sought absolution for my judgmental error. How could I have been so wrong after all that research? Only one action remained. A comprehensive laboratory analysis of the bathroom materials. Luckily for me, the bathroom was already in pieces. Not from my doing, but just from age. It was easy just to snatch a piece of tile and wall right off the ground. I sent the samples to the lab by mail and waited. Each sample will cost about 15,000 yen to analyze. It's not cheap. I'm going to put a link below of the company that I used, but it was a simple process. Simple if you speak Japanese. I had my wife fill out the form and, well, the easy part was just mailing it. The complete process only took a week or so to complete. It was a long week of waiting anxiously. As I waited, I had thoughts of unknowingly inhaling a bread flowers bag's worth of asbestos dust during the kitchen renovation. Was I going to die a miserable death, albeit 20 or 30 years later? I desperately needed this bathroom finished. It had been far too long since my last shower. <laughs> I'm kidding again, come on. But this project would take a turn for the worst if these results came back positive. I had the hammer ready in hand and my face mask on, ready for the result. And the results came in, my palms sweaty. And then, there it was. White wall substance, clear. Pink tile substance, clear. White mortar substance, clear. <gasps> All clear. Clear across the board. Fireworks erupted. Crowds yeah! cheered. I was overjoyed. The hammer swung. Tiles soared through the air and it was a day for celebration and the wrecking of walls. It was the best day of my life. Better than my wedding day. Better than my child's birth. Better than the fantastic buffalo mozzarella cheese I had in Naples, Italy. <laughs> okay, not really. But the elation I felt was close to those events for some reason. <laughs> I wasn't going to die a horrible death. Suddenly, I could breathe better again. The air was no longer a toxic cloud of doom. The air was crisp and fresh like a field of rice during the harvest season on a cool, fresh autumn morning in the countryside of Japan. I never go into a project without doing my research, but we can all make mistakes in judgment. Did I get lucky? Maybe. But the result was an affirmation of what I had already believed to be true based on my extensive research. Let's take a look at some respiratory safety equipment and how effective they are for airborne dust and asbestos. This is your typical dirty shirt and bandana that's been laying around. You wrap the shirt around your nose and you have the most basic respiratory safety mask. Don't do this. It's not effective at all for anything other than smelling your bad odor. Next. This is the 3M N95 or N99 dust mask. The N99 is great for dust, but this mask is totally ineffective against asbestos. So, don't be fooled. Next we have a standard gas mask. This is used with organic gas canisters, which screw into the front. You can also add a dust filter for dust protection and organic vapor protection. Sneezing, whoa, asbestos alert. <laughs> but again, this mask is not effective against asbestos. The last mask I have is the 3M half face mask. This has a special 3M 2091 dust filter installed on the front. This is the only filter sold in Japan that I have found that will filter asbestos. Don't get confused with the standard gas canisters. 
The 6001 filter is great for organic vapors. The 6005 filter is great for formaldehyde as well as organic vapors. But these two gas canisters are not effective for asbestos. The only filter that is effective is the pink filter, 2091 made by 3M. It can filter out fine particle dust and I use this mask exclusively now. So what's the moral of this story? Well, don't rely completely on your own knowledge. Don't rely on others' opinions either. Seek factual, verified results before engaging in any sort of renovation work in your house. You'll sleep better knowing the real facts and you'll breathe better as well. But let's not overreact too much. In small, limited quantities, it might seem harmless. The real concern is, is the persistence in the environment when not properly disposed of. Disruption of asbestos-laden products releases microscopic fibers into the air. These tiny fibers can be inhaled as you move around the room. If disturbed, asbestos can stay in the air for 72 hours or more and around your environment for a long time. If you vacuum asbestos, it can pass through the filter and go into the air and then into your lungs. If you're walking by, you can disrupt the fibers or if you open the windows, you can disturb it into the air and again, inhale it into your lungs. The bottom line, it's not going anywhere easily other than into your lungs. This environmental persistence is what makes asbestos dangerous because the small amount of exposure can turn into a large exposure. The message here is clear. Inhaling it should be far from your daily routine. I hope this video helps you to understand the risks more and helps you to seek the right professional help when needed so you can proceed safely. Good luck, stay safe, and see you next time. Don't forget to hit that like button to help the channel grow. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so already and you enjoy my content. Thank you everyone for your continued support.